Hey guys, it's Mrs. Murray again. Welcome back to part two of the extended essay introduction. Um, in part two, we're going to talk about the timeline that I've set up for you that will help you to keep this process very manageable and totally doable. If you find yourself falling behind on this timeline, that's when this process will get overwhelming. So I strongly recommend that you follow along and do the bits and pieces as they're outlined for you. Some of them will count as grades in classes, some of them will have other penalties if you do them late, some of them are just really strong suggestions. So, um, But even the strong suggestions, you really need to stay on task with this because if you don't and you try to do it all at once, you're going to make your life miserable. And we don't want that to happen because this is supposed to be a learning process and since you're pursuing something that you are passionate about it also should be interesting and not torturous so if you would please get out your extended essay packet that I have given you your yellow packet and open to page three if you do not have a packet please go to sprucecreekib.weebly.com and look under students and extended essay and print out a copy of the packet uh, you are going to need this this is your lifeline throughout the process but this timeline that we're going to talk about starts on page three and it starts with this actual introduction that we're going over right now and then your first actual deadline is February 12th. By February 12th, you should have read through this direction packet and you should have looked at the subject area directions in the actual IB packet at the Spruce Creek High School IB website. There are two packets for this process. This small one that I've just given you is it's everything boiled down. It's the essential stuff, but it's not all of it. On the IB website, you will find the 200-page giant document from, um, from IB World, and that's their full directions for every subject area. The reason why it's so long is because each possible topic has about four to five pages, that's four to five, not 45, four to five pages that you need to read. So if you pick um, subject area one, group one and you're trying to to write a paper in English you need to read those four or five pages that are about English I didn't print out the 200 page packet for everyone because it's not necessary all of the essential stuffs in the yellow but make sure you go on there and if you you open up the PDF from the IB website there's a table of contents so you can quickly skip right to the page you need I also have 10 copies of the big 200 page booklet in the Media Center available at any time for you to um, look at and I'll be happy to print out those pages if you need them if you need a hard copy so by February 12th you should have read this small packet that I've given you plus the four or five pages that relate to the subject area that you think you would like to write your essay on. You should have picked a general subject area for your essay and you should decide upon three possible supervisors in that subject area. We try to give everyone their first choice of supervisor and in some subject areas we only have one possible supervisor. So you would put that supervisor's name for all three choices. But um, where possible we really need you to give us a backup choice because some supervisors will take more students than others you're going to tell me who you are choosing and tell me your subject area by going to that Spruce Creek IB website and filling out the subject and supervisor request form you can also also access it directly from this link that you'll see on the screen here tinyurl.com backslash lvoaxg6 but everything for extended essay is under students laid out step by step under extended essay so this form that you're going to fill out online will prompt you to set some goals for the process and it will prompt you to create an account for Turnitin if you have not already at which point you're going to join the extended essay course uh, for the class of 2015. You're not submitting anything to that Turnitin account yet but we want you to join early just so that you have it in there when it's time to submit. Uh, 
The goals that you're going to be asked to set are things like what grade are you looking for? What do you hope to get out of this process? So you can preview the form before you actually submit if you want to by just going to the link. This has to be done by February 12th. By February 14th, you have to have signed, returned the signed EE contract, which is in the back of this yellow packet, to the IB office to Miss Chance. That's your contract that says, I understand the process, I know what the penalties are if I don't follow the process. It has to be signed by a parent or guardian. You have to have completed both of those steps in order for me to give you a supervising teacher. Now what's the risk if you do these things late? The risk is that your supervising teacher might have already reached their max. So if you are your first choice for a supervising teacher will only work with 10 students and you're the 11th and you turned yours in late, you're the one that's going to get your second choice or your third choice supervisor. All right, so it really is important for you to turn it in on time. And then on February 18th, at a, by 11 o'clock in the morning, you'll be able to go back to the website and see who you've been matched with. That gives the supervisors time to see the list and let me know if it's the right amount and all of that before I announce it to everyone. So don't ask me before the 18th because I can't tell you. So then by the 18th you'll know and you're going to make contact with your supervising teacher. Throughout this whole process you need to remember that they are not responsible for finding you. You are responsible for communicating with them. Their role in this is to be a mentor, a coach, to assist you in whatever way you need and ultimately to sign off on the paperwork for IB World saying that you went through an authentic process and that you learned from this and that they give you the thumbs up. If they cannot give you a thumbs up because you do not go and talk to them ever, that's going to be an issue and IB World is going to give you an E, which means no IB diploma. So make certain that you are in constant contact with your supervisor, checking in with them, emailing them. This first meeting that you're going to have with them, they're going to tell you the best way to communicate with them. Some of you will, have, will be in their class this year, so that makes it easy until the end of the year. If you are not, you need to make sure that you are going by there periodically and checking your emails and texts. So that's by February 21st. You will have made contact with them. And then you're going to have your first meeting. At this first meeting, you will, you will come to this meeting prepared having read this packet, having looked at the section for your subject area. You will also have read sample topics in the extended essays in your chosen subject area that are posted on the IB website, the Spruce Creek IB website. These sample extended essays are going to give you a good idea of what is expected of you do realize that they are not all A papers and that they do not all follow the same standard format that we follow. They are papers that IB has released as examples, so they will at least give you a general idea. It is on a password protected page. The password is IB. You're going to go into this meeting prepared with your general subject area that you're interested in. That needs to be more than just, hey, I want to write about history. You should have narrowed it down at least a little bit to what part of history. You're not expected to know all the answers at this meeting, but you are expected to go in there prepared to have an intelligent conversation. This could be a group meeting. Your supervisor might ask all of you to come in at once, and they will help brainstorm topics and help you narrow it down. After that meeting, and that meeting will take place sometime between the 24th and the 28th, after that meeting, you need to take your supervisor's advice and you have to do the hard work of narrowing down your topic. By the time you meet with your supervisor again, the week of March 10th through the 14th, you should have looked through the information, you should have figured out what specific topic you want to write about, and you should have written a rough thesis so that they can approve or tell you if it needs to be tweaked. Here's where I need you to understand something. IB does not permit two students to write on the same topic. So if you delay in getting this task done, your topic of choice could be rejected because someone else could have claimed it. You have to have narrowed it down to a really good thesis. You have to have met with your supervising teacher and they give it the thumbs up and say, yep, that's a good thesis for this topic area. Then you need to go back to the IB website and fill out the topic thesis proposal form. All of this is step-by-step step 
on the website and you have this handout in front of you. You will also be receiving regular text message reminders about the process. All right, so once you have a thesis, your supervising teacher thinks everything's good, you're off to a good start, you've got a good idea, I've approved it and told you nobody else has the same topic, we are set to go. One more note though, before I can approve that topic, it cannot be anything that you've written about before. It cannot be built upon an IA topic. It has to be something totally new for your extended essay or you will be accused of academic dishonesty by IB World. You cannot do the same thing that you have done for anything else. But your supervisor will remind you of that and they won't approve your thesis if they know that. All right, so now your next step. It's very difficult to write a good paper if you don't have any background knowledge. So your step during the end of March, beginning of April, which encompasses spring break, is to be doing some reading, is to find a book, find some professional journals. These may end up being sources that you use in your paper, or they may just be things that are background information that are helping you to figure out what you need to research please think back to your lesson when you came in or revisit the Media Center website and look at the lesson again where you came in and I talked to you about finding scholarly sources. I highly recommend that you go to the Media Center website and you look at the databases and you search and you read. You're not going to be able to write a good paper if you don't have the prerequisite background knowledge in your subject area. So the more you have, the easier your paper will be to write. Is this something that we can check? Well, we'll see it in your final product. But ultimately, this is the part where it shouldn't be stressful. It should just be you reading about something that you're passionate about. Remember, you picked a topic you're interested in. So this shouldn't be a stressful part of the process. All right, so then we move on to supervisor meeting number three. This is where you are going to communicate with your supervisor, and some of these meetings could be emails instead of face-to-face -face meetings. They're, you're going to talk to them about your background knowledge, and you're going to um, start getting some recommendations for further reading. It's more of a discussion. They're going to check your progress so far. They're going to help you rework your thesis again if needed and check again that you're not wandering off topic. So it's really just a status update. And that ha will happen at the beginning of April, April 7th through 11th. Then you move on to finding your actual sources that you're going to use. You're looking for some real sources, and it might be some of the background reading that you did, like I said. But you want to locate at least five possible sources that you could use for your paper and save those sources to a flash drive, your email, or Google Drive, or print them out so that you can share the actual sources with your mentor so that they can see what direction you're going in. Here's a note, if you are doing a science experiment based topic, at this point in time you're not necessarily looking for sources, you're looking for, um, you're setting up your plan for your experiment, you're conducting the background research basically, and your science teacher will guide you more with that. So you've got your background knowledge, and now testing season begins. What is next? Well. You're going to have to wait till part three because here is where we're going to pause. Our next step, part three in the introduction, will be bringing this extended essay home.